Welcome to another episode of the Rotator Cup Expert. My name is Dr. Daniel Orca. I'm one a, an orthopedic surgeon, board certified in orthopedics. And today we're going to talk about an, another kind of topic on the uh, incisions that we use for the rotator cuff repair. Now I did in a video previously about rotator cuff repairs arthroscopically. And so we'll briefly touch on that. But if you want the details of the incision when you do our arthroscopic repair, please uh, um, uh, look at that video. Uh, this video will be the alternative ways of fixing the rotator cuff. Now there's three ways to fix the rotator cuff. There's one that's called the arthroscopic version. Again, that's talked to and talked about in another video. So please look at that if you want to learn about why are all those little incisions you have. And two, there's a, a, a mini open, an op a mini open, which is a kind of a, a step back in time. Uh, and there's still many people who do a mini open. And we may do a mini open for different reasons, and we'll talk about that as we go along. And third is an open, an open procedure, uh, which is a very large incision in the front of the shoulder where people will use to fix the rotator cuff. Now, less people use it now um, uh, for rotator cuff repairs, although there are still a few people who are in the older generation that may um, do the, the traditional open procedure. So we have learned over time and have experienced over time a way of doing procedures that we can see better and do better uh, as far as rotator cuff repairs. It minimizes the trauma to the tissue uh, and hopefully it minimizes the pain after surgery and hopefully improves the outcomes after surgery. Now, this is somewhat debatable, but obviously when we talk about arthroscopic procedures, we, there are little incisions around the shoulder, and that hopefully will cause less pain and uh, cause us to, uh, to be able to get moving faster, less stiffness, and ultimately a better outcome. Now, traditionally, it is thought that, that that's true, and there's some studies that show that it's true. Um, certainly, that is what we'd say is typical of most people these days. Now, uh, we may do a uh, arthroscopic evaluation, and then some people may then do a, a mini open repair. It's stopping your evaluation through those little poke holes, and then look at what's going on in the shoulder, and then do a mini open. Now, there's different reasons why you might do a mini open. Most of the reasons is because that's what you're most comfortable doing. A mini open is an incision that looks like this. So there's a incision on the outside, or the, I'm sorry, the lateral aspect of the shoulder. It's usually four or five centimeters in, in length, and you can get in there, make that incision, go through all the uh, muscle, the deltoid muscle to get to the rotator cuff and repair it there. Now, typically people who do this are people who are maybe an older generation who are not as comfortable with rotator cuff repairs and uh, feel more comfortable being able to do that procedure open versus doing it arthroscopically. Um, there's less and less people out there that haven't done arthroscopic uh, rotator cuff repair in their training uh, as they get older. Uh, I'm 50, so I spent about 15 years since my training and I was trained arthroscopically, although I was trained open as well. So when we do an open, a mini open, mini open is less traumatic but although there is an incision, we do have to split the deltoid to get into the rotator cuff. So there's some trauma. There's probably some additional stiffness. There's probably some additional pain. Um, and But the good news is people who do the mini open, most of the time, hopefully, will have done a scope before. And the reason why a scope before is important is because there's other things that could cause pain in your shoulder. It's not just the rotator cuff. We have to look at the biceps, we have to look at the labrum, we look at the ball and socket joint. So there's lots of things that can cause pain. It's super important, in my opinion, for us to do a scope before we do uh, whether we do it a mini open or not, so we can see everything and so we can have a, a good evaluation of the shoulder joint, both the, both the glenohumeral joint, the ball and socket joint, as well as the subacromial space. So that's important, I think. Uh, mini open, the other reason why you might do a mini open is you might put a graft on it. So if someone has a really big rotator cuff tear and it doesn't go back where it's supposed to be, we might put a patch graft on top of it. And it's very difficult and tedious and time consuming to do it through the arthroscope. Now you can do it through the arthroscope, but it probably takes two or three times as long. And so most of us don't do it through the scope. We do it through the mini open. Easier for us to pass that graft, easier for us to pass the sutures that are attached to the graft. Again, you can do it, you can do it arthroscopically, although there's a, only a few people who will do it arthroscopically um, and, and probably um, just using the graft itself probably is 
a more invasive uh, procedure. Um, so that's the mini open. There's probably a couple other kind of small reasons why you might do mini open. If it's really big and you, you're having time, hard time seeing, sometimes there's bleeding and it's hard time, it's hard hard to see it through the scope and you might do the mini open. But in my case, in my experience, very rare for me to mini open unless I'm putting a graft on it. Okay, and then um, lastly, the open procedure. The open procedure is the old tri traditional, a big incision down the front of the shoulder. This big incision is seven, eight, nine mil centimeters in length. And typically what we use this shoulder incision nowadays for is to do a shoulder replacement, replacing the ball and socket joint. We still can't do that arthroscopically because those pieces have to get in there and those pieces are bigger than our portals that we use when we do an, do an arthroscopic procedure. But there are a few people who might do an open procedure to fix a rotator cuff. I think it's very rare these days, at least in the United States, for anybody to do an open procedure for a rotator cuff repair. Um, it is a bigger incision, uh, more pain, more stiffness, more increased risk of infection. However, this is the classic traditional way to do it for, uh, you know, back in uh, the 50s and 60s and 70s. That being said, um, the biggest problem that I have with just doing an open is that you can't see anything else in the shoulder. You can't see the rotator cuff. I mean, you can see the rotator cuff, but you can't see the biceps. You can't see other things that that are um, that are could be pain generators. You won't do a subacromial decompression. You can't get in here to take some some bone off. Although you can, but again, it just becomes bigger and bigger and bigger surgery, uh, more and more invasive surgery, and probably not what most of us do these days. So. The three typical ways to do a rotator cuff repair, open rotator cuff repair, unlikely for anybody to do it. If if you have a, a doctor who says that you're gonna do an open rotator cuff repair, you need to make sure you understand what they're doing and why they're doing it. And second, the mini open. The mini open is still fairly common, although most of us in the younger generation, although I'm 50, I still feel like I'm in the younger generation. Younger generation will do arthroscopic unless there's some specific reason to do a mini open. But I will say for me personally, I do probably 99.7% uh, arthroscopic rotator cuff repairs. However, there, there's some senior doctors out there uh, that will do a mini open on most of them. Uh, and then lastly, arthroscopically, uh, that's what the new generation, more and more people, probably most of the orthopedic surgeons that do shoulder surgery, that do rotator cuff surgeries, would do an arthroscopic uh, procedure. So you want to ask your surgeon, if you're going to have a rotator cuff repair, you want to ask them how they're going to do it. Uh, and if they're not going to do it arthroscopically, you want to understand why they're not going to do it arthroscopically uh, before you make a decision to, to have that surgery. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, below. And we'll see you next time for the Rotator Cup Expert. Thanks.